Welcome to this webinar on making an application to the Bayes Industrial Energy Efficiency Accelerator. My name is Paul McKinney and at the, um, at the Carbon Trust and I'm joined by my colleague Andrew Moore from our partners Jacobs and we're going to take you through the process of making an application. <laughs> what happened there? Why is it? Hello, welcome to this webinar on making an application to the Industrial Energy Efficiency Accelerator. My name is Paul McKinney from the Carbon Trust and I'm joined by my colleague Andrew Moore from our partners Jacobs. Um, throughout this webinar, we'll be taking you through the detail of making an application. We'll start off with a brief overview of the application process, talk through the various stages, including submitting of initial ideas for, for consideration uh, before making the actual application. And we're going to talk in a little bit of detail about actually filling in the form um, the Word application form and also the finance form which is in Excel uh, and then there's further guidance given in a guidance note which we'll talk about. So this uh, webinar is specifically about actually filling in the application forms. If you'd like a more general introduction to the program uh, and to for more details on the types of projects and organisations that are, that are eligible and you can visit the IEEA website um, where you can actually download some introductory slides uh, on the home page of that website and then there's further information on the site to talk about eligibility. If you've got any further questions about making an application specifically or the IEEA in more general then please contact us at IEEA at carbontrust.com. So I'm going to start by just talking through the overall application journey. Uh, importantly, the first stage of that is not just um, going straight into filling an application form, but there's a, an initial process, which is where you can submit an idea for initial screening. Uh, and this will help ensure that you can tailor your application appropriately and that um, you can get some guidance to ensure that your your potential project is is potentially in scope uh, to make uh, make sure that it's worth making an application. Once you've had some feedback on your initial uh, idea submission, uh, you can then go ahead with the formal application form, uh, which comprises a a word document to detail your project and your technology, and a finance workbook um, <clears throat> to detail the costings of the project. Once the application form has been submitted, uh, you'll be invited to a further discussion uh, where we talk through the details of the, of the application and make sure everything's uh, compliant with the, uh, the rules of the scheme. Uh, and then assuming everything is compliant, then the application will be passed to the expert assessment panel who will review all of the applications. Uh, it is a competition, so they'll be um, scored uh, and prioritised and then applicants will be informed of the decision um, and any further conditions before the project begins. So as I've mentioned, the first stage of the process is to submit an initial idea. The, on the home page of the IEEA, IEEA website, there is a button that says submit project or technology idea for consideration. Uh, and when you click on this, you're asked to complete a short form which includes your contact information. And then the other fields are firstly a technology description where you just give a brief summary of what your novel technology is. Uh, and in particular, highlight what is innovative about it compared with current good and best practice in the particular market that you operate. Um, you should then describe the technology markets 
for which your technology is relevant. So that might be the food and drink sector. It might be particular subsectors within a within a uh, within an industry, or it might be that you're going to target a particular sector for your application, but that it will actually have wider replication across sectors. We then ask for a Having described the technology for a description of the actual project that you would like to do a demonstration for, um, so this might include details of what what uh, sector it's in, what what actual company or what type of company you're planning to demonstrate in, what you, what which industrial site you'll be demonstrated at, um, who the parties involved are, and whether the, what the sort of likely timescales for the project are. We'll also then ask you to describe the potential benefits of the project. So we're particularly interested in the energy savings benefit. Um, that might be in terms of an absolute amount for the project or in terms of sort of percentage energy savings. Uh, and we're interested for the project, but also for the wider sector. Um, but we're also interested in non-energy benefits. So if there's maintenance savings with the technology or if there's um, uh, reduced scrap levels or um, um, yeah, sort of improved yield. Um, we then ask for the technology readiness level. So this is de defined uh, on the IEEA website and in the guidance notes that are available, which we'll mention later. Um, and we'd like to know what the current technology readiness of the technology is and what it's likely to be at the end of the project. And we're looking to support projects which have um, TRLs of between five and eight, and we'll be looking to progress them to sort of between eight and nine. Uh, and then the final question on there is uh, whether you are already in talks with a potential industrial partner. So it is, um, it's okay to submit an idea as a technology developer where you don't yet have a partner, um, um, but uh, and then we're, we can potentially provide some assistance with finding an industrial partner. Uh, but if you do have a partner, then um, then put them down and and you'll be closer to the making application process. Once you've submitted that screening form, um, that that sorry the idea submission form, there'll be an initial uh, assessment carried out of the idea, and we'll probably. Um, uh, Unless it's unless it's immediately out of scope, we'll probably have a discussion with you to um, to un understand some more, and then advise you on whether you're ready to proceed with the full application process. At this point, um, it it's uh, a good idea to download the application applicant guidance note, which gives full details on all aspects of of making an application to the IEEA. Um, uh, the uh, the little green bot um, button at the bottom is uh, is on the website and that shows you that's that's how you access this guidance note. So you download application documents that gives you access to this guidance note and also to all of the application forms. The guidance note itself tells you about the uh, eligibility of different projects um, and it gives you guidance detailed guidance really on filling in each stage of the application form. Um, so um, that can all be downloaded from the IEA website. It also provides uh, detailed advice on compliance with their state aid rules, which is an important aspect. Um, before applying, you can also uh, have a look at the Carb Trust website where we maintain a list of frequently asked questions and we'll be keeping these updated during the course of the uh, application window. Um, in terms of the application form itself, the, there are a number of sections to it. Um, there's a checklist at the front of it, which you can go through to make sure you've, you've covered all of the various aspects that uh, need to be considered. <clears throat> Once it's completed, it, you submit it electronically by, by email, um, in this case before the 30th of April 2019. The various sections are, are equally weighted in terms of the scoring. Uh, the project costs and finances are covered in a separate form and we'll show you that later on. Um, just to make it easy to fill in, the core questions are broken down into a, a set of additional sub-questions so that we can sort of guide you through providing all the information that the, the assessment panel will need. 
So guidance, the section three of the guidance note provides the sort of full details on how to fill in the form. But we're now going to take you through the sort of core sections with a little bit of um, inf guidance on the, the types of things that we're looking for in those sections. I'm going to hand over to my colleague Andrew to, uh, to take you through the form. So as Paul said, um, the application form guidance um, is available, which is laid out in um, the structure of the application form itself um, to help guide through completing the relevant sections of the form, which we'll now walk through each of the main sections. So the first section is project aims and objectives, where we're looking to understand both the project and the technology. As Paul said earlier, understand what the current TRL is, the science, the technology, and a general overview and there's opportunity for more detail later on. So within this section we're looking for an initial high level introduction to the project and you may want to use the information from your idea submission which you provided earlier on. The intent in this section is to give the assessment panel an initial introduction to the project itself and um, prior to providing uh, more detailed information later on in the form. Section on technical overview, and um, we're looking for an understanding of the technical aspects of the technology, what are the basic principles, how it will reduce energy consumption within target sectors, what's the innovation, barriers to adoption, and what testing has already been undertaken. The next section moves on to potential impact, where we're looking at what the likely replication is, what the potential sector reach is, and what the total impact of a successful demonstrator project could be. The intent here is to be able to describe, um, starting with the energy saving of the technology and build this looking at the in individual demonstrator process itself, what the potential benefits are relative to the demonstrator site, and then moving into a description and looking at what the approximate size of a target market would be. And as we said earlier, there are some questions throughout the sections which help guide your responses. Moving on to commercialization. This is understanding what the business model is for being able to develop from the demonstrator project to a successful rollout of a commercialized product. We're looking for information on what an expected return on investment would be for both the demonstrator project but also a replicable project. In this section as well there is opportunity to include information on whether you are looking for incubation support and a separate part of the program is to help incubation of successful demonstrator projects. For project design and deliverability, um, this starts with outlining the work packages for the project itself and the deliverables against these. Here we're also expecting a project Gantt chart and there's an opportunity to describe the project team itself and the experience of both consortium members and key personnel within the project teams. Finally, this section ends with a risk assessment um, where you can include either your own templates or follow um, an example which is in the guidance material. The finance form is a separate Excel form which covers project finances and this gives opportunity to provide breakdown of both costs and resources against the work packages. Um, it enables the assessment panel to take a view of the buildup of these costs um, and the form which we're about to demonstrate, um, you are able to cut and paste information into the form from whatever um, cost build you've prepared yourselves. So we're now going to move into a demonstration of completing the finance form. So the purpose in this stage of the webinar is to provide guidance on completing the applicant finance form. And it's important to note here that um, detailed information on completing the finance form, again, is available in the guidance note. Within this webinar, we'll be looking to assist with navigation and guidance on entry and information. The first sheet you'll see is the summary sheet, and cells throughout the form will be colour coded in either white or grey. Cells which are coloured white will require entry of information from the applicant, and values in the grey cells will be automatically calculated. 
When you click on any of the white cells, it will open up a pop-up window which provides more information on what is required to be entered in the cell. In certain sections of the form, white cells will be coloured yellow. This indicates that costs have been entered, but a description or resource name has not. This helps identify incomplete information. In the summary sheet for now, we've entered just the date, a demonstration project title, and the names of technology developer and the industrial partner. And there's the opportunity to add in an additional partner if required. We're now going to move on to the work package costing sheet. This sheet provides an in-depth breakdown of project costs and man hours. You should list out here the work packages aligned to your project plan and you'll have already listed these in the application form itself. We've completed um, the first work package name on the form and all that's needed here is a simple title for the work package which can be later used to allocate costs to. We're now going to move to the next sheet, which is labour and overhead costs. This section is where you can provide details of the labour costs for each project work package and it needs to be completed for all partners. There's a separate table for each partner, so there are hyperlinks at the top of the form which you can click on, which will take you to the relevant tables within this sheet. Going back to the top of the table, um, there is information on um, number of bank holidays and holiday entitlement, which has defaults in already. To complete the form, you can select the relevant work package from the drop down list and then enter a staff role or name, the day rate, the number of days spent, and the associated overhead rate as a percentage of salary. Important to note here that if the same member of staff is involved in multiple work packages, then a new entry will need to be made for each work package. As I said at the start of this section, it is possible to cut and paste information. So if you've already built up costs in a separate spreadsheet, the information can be pasted across into this worksheet. So we've just completed a number of individuals against different work packages on the labour tab. We're now going to move to the next sheet, which is materials and consumable costs. In this section, we can provide breakdown of all the material costs associated with each work package for all partners. Again, there's the hyperlinks that take you to the relevant sections for each of your partners. And as the last sheet, you can select a work package from the drop down list and then enter the details of the material or consumable name. Quantity to be used and the cost of a single unit. And this needs to be completed for all work packages. We do, however, expect that for this um, section, there will be a smaller number of work packages that materials are associated with. We're just completing two example materials and then we will move to capital equipment and costs. So the capital equipment cost section details costs for any of the capital equipment items. Again, in a similar format, you can select the work package against each of the partners and indicate whether the equipment is a new purchase, it's an existing asset using the drop down menu. You can enter the depreciation period in months, price of the equipment, the residual value at the end of the project and the utilisation percentage. This being the time that the equipment is used in the project as a proportion of the total time the equipment is used. The guidance note um, can be gives further information on the depreciation and residual value. Again, for this section, we do expect that there will be a smaller number of work packages and um, that capital items are applicable to. Next section, which we will move on to, is subcontracts costs. So here, detailing out any subcontracts costs, again, against individual work packages, indication of the company to whom the subcontract will be made, 
and a brief description of the work to be carried out as well as the cost. There's also a box at the bottom of the section which allows you to provide any further information regarding the justification for the use of subcontractors carrying out the work. So we're now filling out an example of a subcontract cost against one of the other partners. So in this case, the industrial partner. And we will, when we complete the form, we will go back to the summary and we'll be able to see that the information has been totalized against all the individual partners and cost breakdown. The final section is travel and subsistence costs. And again, following similar format to the other sections, costs can be allocated against each of the individual partners and the individual work packages themselves. Here we're looking for a very brief one line description of what the um, travel costs are, its purpose, um, number of times of a particular journey and the cost associated with it. Finally, for any cost that can't be allocated to any of the other sections, then there is uh, the cost section. Um, this, again, just gives the opportunity to assign them where needed against the work package and detail can be allocated as we're demonstrating now. Once these have all been entered, we can return back to the summary tab at the beginning of the workbook. As we scroll down to the finance summary table, lower down the form, you can see for each partner um, that there is the need to enter a percentage of the total project costs that you are requesting and believe, believe are eligible to receive as a base grant from the programme. There's an opportunity to put a comment in the box below as to why you've chosen that particular percentage and as we've said earlier, um, guidance on this is available within the guidance note. We're also wanting information at the bottom of this form as to the nature and source of the organization's own contribution for the remaining funds that are required compared to the grant funding. If all the information is being filled out correctly, then the summary sheet will now display a breakdown of costs for each individual partner, as well as the proposed base funding you're wishing to apply for. You can also, on the second work package tab, um, cross-reference that all the work packages have been allocated a name and add additional work packages as required or work package names as required. Returning to the summary tab, you will be able to cross check and that all the information is is correct and has been um, is all been calculated for you. All the grey cells have automatically been completed from the information that was entered on the other sheets. Remember that more information on filling in the finance form can be found in section 3.2.5 of the guidance note. Thank you, Andrew. So um, we've taken you through filling in the application form and the application uh, finance form. Uh, the last stage is then to submit the application form to the um, IEA inbox. But before you make your submission, please do make the following checks. Firstly, make sure that the um, all of the work package and mark um, the book package details have been completed in the finance form. <clears throat> Make sure that the um, state aid rules that you are comfortable that you are complying with the state aid rules that are laid out in the guidance note. There's further links within the guidance note are to full information on the state aid rules. 
uh, and it, you may wish to seek external advice uh, to ensure that you are compliant with these. Make sure that you append a uh, Project Gantt chart uh, when you submit your application form. So there's a section within the form that asks for the, for the Gantt chart, uh, laying out the various work packages, uh, and you can send that as a separate document. There is also a section within the application form for the project risk register, which again, you can complete as a separate document and uh, append to the application. And we also, within the application form, we ask for a summary of the key personnel, um, but also uh, you can also append CVs for the uh, key people with named people within the project. <clears throat> So uh, that's the end of this particular webinar. As we said earlier, there's further information available on the IEA website and you can get in touch